Um, so I'm kind of wrapping this up with a little bit of a weird presentation. Um, pretty much everything else we've done here has been roads and vehicles and pedestrians. And here I'm going to simulate a baggage handling system at an airport. So to remind everyone, this session is called multimodal simulation. So whenever you get asked by a client about multimodal simulation, remember to include suitcases. Project goals. I just want to see if I can model a bare baggage handling system in VISM. Um, there's a lot of unique elements to a baggage handling system. Can I sort of replicate those within the software? Is it a practical solution? Is it something new that um, my company, Rocondo, which exclusively does airport planning, can offer? Strengths, weaknesses to modeling it. Um, is the effort worth the reward? Uh, there is no project for this. It's really just me doing a proof of concept. The numbers are not based on anything. It's just sort of an assumption and some ideas I ran by, um, which is also great for me to get out of any of your questions. Why baggage handling systems? Because it seems odd. Uh, back in 2018, I'd been with Recondo for a year. A coworker asked me if that modeling software I used could work for bags. He'd previously worked for TSA doing baggage handling, so he was curious about it. It was something I'd never thought about, of course, um, and I immediately was going, well, the driver behaviors would be something you have to modify and the speeds. And so the, the famous phrase, I'll look into it and let you know in a few days. Um, Los Angeles International Airport did not allow me to look into it. They were experiencing heavy traffic and I needed to do some planning. However, the idea stuck with me and I finally got the perfect chance because here we are in Denver, which has a lovely history with baggage handling systems. Do any of you know, remember this? 1995? Maybe a tad early. Books have been written about the failure of the airport. And for those of you who don't know, here is the automated baggage system. And I think his face really sums it up. They shut this system down 10 years later after only one of the airlines at Denver used it. Um, and they ended up installing an entirely separate manual operation to handle the bags. So what is a baggage handling system? For those of you who aren't familiar, you're most likely thinking of something like this, where you've got your baggage carousel and you pick up your bags. Maybe your more typical experience feels like that, where it's surrounded by people. Um, the level of service for baggage carousels is actually measured by how much personal space you feel like you have. So. What I'm actually looking at is sort of the other side of the baggage handling system. That's from when you check it in to it gets on the plane. And so that involves a whole system of conveyor belts, vertical lifts, scanners, bumpers, sortation devices, and even some of those same bag carousels on the way. Um, arrivals bags do go through sort of a simpler baggage handling system. Uh, those that are transferred may be entered into the main system and uh, the bags that you pick up if you just landed in Denver and you need to pick up your bag in Denver, they're usually loaded straight off the plane into some carts and then they drive the carts to the baggage claim and they just unload them on the other side of the wall. So when it kind of comes through the wall, there's just guys with carts on the other side. So this is pretty complex. Um, the flow chart sort of works counterclockwise. You start at the top, you've got your check-in, which is often called induction into the system. Uh, transfer bags would also go in here if they require some sort of screaming. screening. That then goes to an explosive detection system where it's automatically scanned by a computer. The computer says that looks concerning or no problem. If it's no problem, that's what's called a level one bag and it moves on to being sorted. If the computer flags it as there's a potential problem with this, it is directed to a separate bag system and there's a manual review by a TSA agent. They're looking over the image that the computer has taken, like an x-ray scan. Um, if it's determined to be just a false alert, that's called a level two bag and it's rerouted back into the main system. If the manual review of the image indicates that there is some sort of problem, that's a level three bag and it requires further inspection, a physical inspection where the TSA agents will actually unlock or open your bag and uh, have a look through it. Hopefully there's no issues, and again, it returns to the system. But if there is some sort of issue, it's removed from the system. They probably read your name on the PA system. The police may be involved, you know. So after the security screening goes to bag sortation, where the bags are organized, uh, it may go to bag storage, depending on if you're four or five hours early for your flight. Otherwise, it goes to what's called bag makeup, and that can be either piers or carousels before the plane. We're going to talk in more detail about some of these aspects 
uh, first thing is check in. So you've all done it. You go to the desk, you check in, they weigh and they tag your bag. They put it on the belt and off into the system it goes. Uh, typically, it takes about three minutes for people to check in. And if any of you are feeling superior and like, oh, I always check in online and self tag, apparently that actually takes about two and a half minutes. So not that much faster. Um, as you can see, the bags typically fed onto a belt and then they go onto another belt in the back. That belt is moving at a relatively low speed of around 30 feet per second. Uh, it may vary from airport to airport. The next section is that explosive detection system that I talked about. Um, the EDS scanner, you can see it down on the bottom left. If any of you have ever flown through DCA at, uh, in DC, you have to manually take your bag over to this machine because their terminal is too small and they can't actually do it all in one go. I had to do that on my way here. Um, so again, it's scanned, no threat, just goes on to sortation and bag makeup. If there is a um, some sort of automated detection of a threat, the vertical sortation device will kick in, and that's what's pictured on the right. I'll be honest, I don't entirely know how this works, but basically it brings down a bag, a belt, and your bag will go up above and to a separate system, um, where it then either is a false alert and return to the system, or it's opened by a TSA agent, and you get one of those little paper slips that says TSA looked at your bag. Beyond that is bag makeup. This is how they get this big pile of bags uh, into individual baggage carts to then go to your plane to go to the right place or the wrong place, it happens. Um, typically, this is done by either carousels or piers. Carousels are the same thing as when you pick up your bag. It's just a looping device where the bags will just sit there and somebody until somebody takes them off or what's called a pier system. Uh, the pier system is one man bag. Uh, I'm sorry, one main belt going along and then it's spitting the bags out into perpendicular piers and I'll show an image on the next screen. Uh, that's more typical for a hub airline. The carousels are often shared between airlines and it's for sort of the smaller operators. Um, and then if your bag cannot be scanned and routed to the appropriate place, it goes to an office where the people look at the tags and manually read it themselves and get it directed to the right place. So as I said, uh, bag makeup, carousels and piers. Carousel on the left, bags come in, usually from above or below into the middle. You've all seen this when you picked up your bags, and then it goes around. The baggage carts and tugs will be parked around the outside, and there will be an agent who watches as everyone goes by and looks for his, the tag for the flight that he's picking up. Uh, for a pier system, the bag will go along. It'll be bumped out um, by a uh, basically a big swinging arm that pushes it onto the other belt. Um, the rightmost one of those piers is illustrating if the uh, attendant is off having a smoke break or something. The bags just sort of pile up at the end of the pier because the system only moves it forward slightly every time a bag is put on rather than a continuously running belt. That bag is that belt is actually inactive. Um, the piers do allow you to basically just stack your carts there and not actually have a tug active. Uh, when the carts are empty, you can easily push them around. I was a baggage handler at one point. It's a fun job. Um, so those pure belts don't actually move unless the operator is paying attention. All right. So now that I've given you some background on what a baggage handling system is, let's go into the VISM model a little bit. So right off the bat, there's a bunch of things we have to think about. For one, all the links are about three feet wide because bag belts are pretty narrow. Um, belts move at exact speeds, typically 30, maybe 90 feet per set, uh, sorry, feet per minute, could be 45 or 60. So you just have to set a strict strict distribution for the speed, and it just looks like a vertical line in VISM. Um, acceleration of the bags as they move between belts is basically going to be instantaneous um, because the belt is already moving at that speed. So I'm going to set the desired speed and maximum acceleration to a high value. Same with the deceleration. Uh, turns out VISM has a limit on the maximum acceleration, which is just above gravity. Should be good enough for this. Um, bags, if you, you've seen the bag belts, the bags are often touching each other. They're very close together. Um, so I need to modify the following behavior to get that really close separation of the bags. So what I did is I modified the standstill distance down to half a foot. Uh, the default's two meters or 6.56 feet. I also removed the additive and multiplicative uh, parts of the safety, safety distance. Some people who are more experienced are probably screaming and saying this is a terrible idea, and that's fine. 
Now, but what about if there's a jam or a stoppage on a baggage belt? Because bag belts are a they're one entity. They move together. So if we watch the top one, this is what should happen. When the first bag stops, the second bag should stop instantaneously, right? But Vism, with the way that the following behavior works, is going to have that second bag continue going until it reaches the first one, as in this illustration. So I think maybe if that standstill distance was really large, you could get it to react to the vehicle ahead of it and stop at the same time, but then it would never merge correctly. Um, if anyone has any ideas, my email will be provided. Uh, but yeah. So fortunately, going back to these images of a bag system from earlier, baggage belts are typically divided into small units that are three to six feet long, as you can see. So I'm just sort of ignoring this issue. Um, for most of the places where the bag would need to stop, for instance, being merged onto another belt, at that junction point, the baggage belts will be subdivided, and therefore the following behavior aspect of VISM is maybe not the biggest issue. So again, just ignoring it, but again, have any ideas? Let me know. Uh, so this theoretical airport that I've made up in this VISM model, um, I'm assuming that there are going to be three scanners for the explosive detection system. I'm assuming that those scanners are alerting at what my coworker tells me are the typical um, levels. By the way, I am a landside modeler. I This is my first, I learned a lot of this stuff just for this. Um, but about 75% of bags are scanned and no issue. And another 20% are scanned and then identified as a potential threat reviewed by a TSA agent just on the image and determined to be a non-threat. And then 5% of bags are the ones that actually get searched. Um, there is also oversized bags. So if you check your C's, those always get searched. Um, but I didn't include that in this model. Uh, I did put in the links for where the oversized bags would go, but I didn't include it. I'm also assuming that there are five airlines operating here. Airline one is the hub airline with 60% uh, market share and they are using a peer-based system. And then the other four airlines are between 15 and 5% of the market share, and they're using baggage carousels. So here's an image of what my made up network looks like in VISM. So in the bottom right is where check-in is. We've got pedestrians coming in, going up to check-in desks. The bags enter the system. They then proceed uh, up the right edge to the three scanners that you can see in red. And from there, the bags are either divided up or kept level and go to level two or level three. Um, we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. Or they're sorted to the airlines with the carousels being in the top left and the piers being in the bottom right. So some specific challenges I found when I did this was I wanted to I wanted to make it sort of look right. So I wanted pedestrians to walk up to a check in desk and then have a bag appear. So the first thing was, how do I get the pedestrians to actually walk up to a desk that's not already occupied? And I did this using a VAP. Um, there's a lot of VAPs in this file. I've now learned that I could be using attribute modifications and removing a lot of this work, but I did this last week, not this week. Uh, so basically I placed a stop sign um, at the check-in desk. I placed it at an angle as the pedestrians turn around, so it tries to make them look like they're looking at the bag. Um, and then there are detectors from the Q end. Those detectors cover the entire length of their path to that desk so that if that detector is occupied, the partial route will have a relative flow change to zero. So nobody else will be assigned to that one. There's also a signal head there that says, if all of the detectors are occupied, turn the signal red, nobody can go to any of the desks. Um, the other thing was getting the bags to actually appear as the pedestrian appeared. Uh, so a uh, passenger, I should say. So what I have is a hidden link underneath where there's just a constant queue of bags fed in with a stop, um, a signal head. And that is constantly red until a pedestrian approach it, passenger approaches the check-in desk, at which point the signal turns green and the bag is then fed into the system stopped by a second signal head until the passenger leaves the check-in desk and then it's fed into the network. And since that was all very confusing, here's a couple of videos. The left one is going to be the passengers being distributed between the different kiosks. It's a lot more choppy on here than it was on my PC. So now you see the signal turns red and they wait. Um, I originally modeled this as a pedestrian queue area and that did not work. So it's 
passenger leaves, new passenger goes, they run over each other, but it's fine. And then he goes and waits, a new bag appears. I also put in just way too many pedestrians for what these check-in desks can handle. Um, and you'll see that later. On the other side, in the second video that should now be playing, it's blink and you'll miss it and she's gone. Um, but the bags are underneath and then they move up as the new person goes. So watch this a couple more times. Bag releases, new bag appears. It's not perfect, um, especially in some of my earlier models, multiple bags were appearing per passenger, but I figure that's probably realistic for an international flight. All right. For the explosive detection system, uh, I needed to split the bags into three different categories, and I didn't want to just create multiple vehicle types for that, so I used attributes um, and uh, created a user-defined attribute for the alert level. Uh, I also did it for airlines and the flight number. Um, and I use partial routes through this E um, explosive detection system so that if it was a level one bag, you know, it went here and two, it went there and all that. And then I used um, just an elevated link above the other ones to represent that multi level baggage system. And um, for level three screening, I needed to have a queue. Basically, the bags all arrive to this belt and they sit and they wait until a TSA agent is available to review them. So I needed to get a queue system where the bags would wait appropriately until the TSA agent was free. I did basically the same thing I did for the pedestrians, uh, passengers going to the check-in desk. And you can also see the bags in the background uh, moving through the scanners. They do stop ever so slightly when they're in the scanner so that the scanner can get a good image. And then uh, you'll also notice that every suitcase is orange and every duffel bag is yellow. And that's because I used SketchUp models for this and I didn't know how to change the colors. I still don't. All right. After the bags have been screened, they go to bag sortation. This is how do you get them to the different uh, where they're supposed to go, how do you get them on the right flight? So they again, they were given a user defined attribute airline. Um, and then the static routes are based on if you are airline equals number two, you go to this bag carousel um, or to these peers. So fairly simple. Now for the carousels, uh, I did have a little bit of a challenge in getting these to operate correctly. When a bag comes down onto a carousel, it should just loop infinitely until someone actually takes it off. So I use static routes to send people to the top right corner of the carousel, at which point there was a um, static route there that would either take them all the way back around to the exact same point, or it would take them around and off the network into the where the baggage carts would park. Um, and this was this was done again using a VAP where the bags would lurk. Uh, circle around until a the detector was activated at which point the relative flow on the route would change so that they would exit the network uh, oh hold on i want to get my hot seat request in early uh formula based parking routing thank you i've done this three years in a row now i think someday um so here's a video of it sort of working badge cart comes in and this video is going to kind of jump forward because nobody wants to watch slowly moving objects around the thing. Uh, so the yellow duffel bag will be the first one that gets to go off the network and go into the cart. So now you see the bag starting to be removed. You notice that there's a queue of bags um, built up trying to get onto the system. That's because I probably set too long of a seating time. I wanted the bags to really fill the system before the baggage cart started arriving. And also that conflict area was set up incorrectly and it wasn't aggressive enough. I fix that now. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to move to is the peers. Um, first challenge for the peer parking, and I think Lucas will be interested in this one. Uh, I tried to use the new back in parking because that's how they're situated. They back the carts in and then they pull them out. Uh, when I attempted to troubleshoot this, I started the model. And then if you watch sort of in the bottom left, you'll see a baggage cart come in and it hits the parking route and Vism crashes. So I'm assuming it's something to do with multi-segmented vehicles and the back where it's parking, not working. Um, solution, I just make them park by pulling in first. It's fine, it's good enough. Um, I did test this in version 2022 service pack 05. It didn't work. I updated it to service pack 07 just to make sure also didn't work. I didn't want to come up here and be like, ha, ha you have a problem. And then I'm the idiot. All right. So the other challenge with baggage peers is that, as I mentioned before, when a bag gets put onto the pier, 
the belt only moves forward slightly. So the bag should then wait at the end of the pier, unless there is um, the actual baggage handler operating the belt to move it forward. I promise it's not that much longer. I'm getting close. Um, so unless that agent is actually there to move the belt forward, the bag is going to sit at the end. Well, how do I get the bag to stop at the end of the belt and wait there? And more importantly, how do I get it to move down when the next bag is coming onto the belt? Well, my solution was just to put a bunch of signal heads along the length of the pier and then set up a VAT, which is if there's a bag coming onto the pier, turn most of the signal heads, not all of them, um, but most of them green. So now the bag will continue moving down the belt. Uh, this works until you get to the end of the belt because in reality, the system doesn't just start shoving bags off into onto the ground. It'll, it'll stop the belt and it'll stop the next belt. So there is a second, um, there's a signal head at the end that's set on a separate group that is kept red always until a baggage cart arrives. Uh, once the baggage cart arrives, all of them are set to green because at that point, I assume there's someone there actually loading the bags onto the cart. So here we have a video. We've got a top-down video showing how that works, and you can see the bags moving forward. Um, I think I need some more signal heads on here to maybe not move them as forward as far. Uh, but this was pretty good for a test. And you see it, you know, it's doing it for a couple of them. So it's not perfect, especially once the bag gets to the end here. Now you see there are closing that distance. So something I need to think about some more. Um, and then the video on the right is the 3D. And so this is when a cart arrives and you see that the full thing turns green and the bags start to clear off. Um, this video is going to go on for a little bit. You'll notice that the uh, viewing counting from the bottom, the second one is already fully packed. Uh, and Visum decided to wait just as long as it possibly could before sending a cart there, even though that was the busiest one, even though I had the parking attractiveness set really high. Turns out that there was some sort of issue with the way that the connectors were set in for pulling in and backing out. I think there may be a certain order it needs to be in. Um, I did kind of get that fixed after the fact, but here you can see the system getting freed up as that uh, as it clears out. And here's one of the carts leaving, and so the pier goes back to all red. All right. And um, evaluations and conclusions. As I said at the start, I basically did this for fun in my own time, so I just threw so, threw together some quick evaluations. I took the average density and you know you can identify some hotspots just from the density. Um, I had to apply some pretty random factors to the density because baggage have a much higher average density than your traditional vehicles. Um, I did do some node results through my explosive detection system and saw that I got an average of 380 bags through, whereas TSA requirements say that each one should get 600. So that should be 1800 total. Um, but I wasn't really testing for, for capacity. And then my coworker, when I asked him, what, what are the you know, KPIs for a baggage handling system? And he said, oh, just the time it takes to go through the system. And that was it. So there's the time it takes to go through the system, uh, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on what level of screening the bag is. I'm pretty sure that's really, really bad for a real airport. But uh, no, it was an experiment. Uh, so conclusion, it is possible to replicate a lot of the aspects of the baggage handling system within VISM. There are some simplifications that have to be assumed, particularly as it relates to a sort of a belt based movement. Um, but that's only likely to be an issue on long continuous belt stretches, which there aren't that many of or they shouldn't be the areas that are getting backed up. Um, I had to use a lot of workarounds with VAP, but now I know that there's better solutions for that. Um, I was not getting nearly the throughput of a real baggage handling system, but that wasn't, wasn't really my target. Uh, this took a pretty large amount of effort for really not that much in terms of a model, uh, but in the future, I could reuse some of the elements and lessons learned from here, so there would be um, efficiency. Do I have one more minute? Yes. Okay, as I mentioned, I was a baggage handler, so I want everyone to know, do not wrap your bag in plastic. They hate that. Um, so if you do that, it means that your bag doesn't slide. Um, your bags are slid underneath the standard narrow body jet. And if you wrap it in plastic, it just stops. And so then they end up just throwing it multiple times um, and they're not gonna be as nice. But do get a four wheel bag uh, with the, like that. 
not with a, not the plastic and uh then they can just shove that and it's nice and easy baggage handlers they really don't go through your stuff and look through it when i worked there there was one story of a person who had done that um someone had an athletic bag and they had an orange in the mesh pocket on the outside and he took out the orange and ate it and apparently the passenger was watching from the plane um and he got fired for it but that was the only stealing incident uh, your bag does get thrown and it gets hit by machines, so be prepared for that. And it's really the belts and the equipment. Um, this may be slightly exaggerated, but this video will show you what happens in some of that sortation. Yes. It's, it's not the most gentle. All right, is there anyone here who has experience with baggage handling systems? Okay, I don't have to ban anyone from questions, so go ahead. 